Hey, I'm Cyclone, back with another very interesting strategy. And today we're taking a look at Ritual Farming. Now, Ritual Farming, I think, is chasing the big drops while having enough sustain to do so. And I will explain that in a bit after I showed you what the setup is. Now, for this video, I will try a bit of a different approach. As you will see in a moment, the setup has been recorded. Uh, the setup has been recorded separately, and I would really appreciate uh, feedback if you like this more, or if you want to just see me go hop over to the uh, pew, over the tree, then go to the spreadsheet and explain the scarabs there. All right, I see you in a bit. The Atlas of Choice will contain uh, ritual notes. Exarch nodes and map sustain nodes. So we are going to be utilizing singular focus to sustain our favorite map, in this case Ezark Glacier or City Square. We're going to be utilizing skittering swarms and combining that with amplified artifacts to get a decent amount of scarabs from our maps. And then we utilize mounting modifiers, chisel perfection, or if you want to skip chisels, just three more nodes in front of it. Combine it with Shaping the skies, shaping the world, and the five small map chance nodes, as well as all the map effect nodes, to try to get as many maps as possible. You can also use remarkable relics to get a slight increase of valuable scarabs and invasive adversaries, so those nodes are kind of optional. Then we take all the small exile pack size nodes, as well as Word of Exile and Wrath of Cosmos, and then we pick up Beyond. Beyond, we want to be at 92 beyond chance. As far as we know, there is an eight, uh, there's an eight percent base chance for beyond to be in your map. So with a 92 percent plus that eight, we are at the cap beyond chance node. Uh, at cap beyond chance, meaning beyond is guaranteed for our maps. We're using endless tides just so we don't have to deal with the bosses. However, there's an argument to be made to keep the boss for ritual farming specifically. At this point, I just like to have that keystone, so I'll be using it. The choice will be up to you. Finally, we are picking up ritual nodes, as this is a ritual farm. First of all, we are capping our ritual spawn chance, because we need to path over these nodes anyway. And then we take almost all tiny nodes. For me, I never have the favor to really take care of the ritual splinters, so I'm not taking these small nodes. Everything else I am grabbing. Now there are strategies where you first defer a lot and then pick up arbitrary tenants and use this one to then get your items out of the ritual. However, I currently, at least on a small testing size, it felt like that arbitrary tenants doesn't really apply to the cost of items that I started deferring, only to items that I defer for the first time and after that their favor cost is locked in from the last time and then just constantly reduced. So I am not using that keystone. The maps themselves we can chisel, alk and go, so we just chisel them and roll them as needed, or we literally just alk and go. However, again, be in mind that if you alk and go, you do not want to have chiseled perfection, as this one doesn't apply anything to you. If you want to utilize chiseled perfection, you do need to uh, uh, do you do need to chisel your maps. On the map device, we don't need anything. We are already guaranteeing ritual, and we're guaranteeing the exact influence. And then we have four scarps we or three scarps we want to use and two flexible spots. We want to use a ritual scarp of selectiveness, ritual scarp of wisps, and ritual scarp of evidence. On top of that, we can use an influencing scarp of the hordes to increase our eight or exact pack sizes, which is a nice little thing to have. On the last spot, you can either use a sacrifice fragment. You don't need anything. Also, you can just do it on a four device map spot by just using the map into three ritual scarabs. Or you can use a ritual vessel, a blood filled vessel. Now, these vessels do feel quite nice to have. However, they do up the cost. So, this is a question of having the investment or not. As for running the map, once we have our map prepared, we just want to load the map up. Now, in this map, we are looking at being efficient. There are two ways to play, run this map down. I prefer to first rush to the boss and then clear the map backwards. However, if your build cannot manage that, you can also go the other way around and you clear everything but the rituals. In my case, I can rush the boss fairly quickly, so I will do that first. 
if I get any Exarch Altars spawned, I will pause for them. But otherwise, I will just rush the boss. So here I got Exarch Altars, so I'm waiting for a moment. I'm looking at them, which I want to use in case there's a boss one I want to use for, let's say, get four additional chaos or something. And then when I'm at the boss, I do hope that I find a ritual on the boss. If we find a ritual on the boss, they have, there's a few things that's going to apply in this map. First of all, we're going to get a lot of ritual tribute. Second of all, we can utilize a vessel. I will show this in a moment. The boss is down. We now will start our first ritual, which luckily for us, Ascent is on the boss room. During the ritual, look for this blue orb and the golden wrist around it to stay inside to get additional favor. Now, you saw I already got close to 5k favor. And if we use a Bloodfelt Vessel, we see that there are six enemies, uh, six unique monsters in this one. These small goats that spawn before the big goat are considered unique and they do give a lot of tribute. So they are really great to have. City Square applies the same with the three map bosses, which is why that is a good alternative for the strategy if you prefer that map. Now we're gonna clear the map as it comes. We just run it back to front instead of front, of front to back. Again, try to stay in the... Oops, well, that was not intended. Try to stay with the orb in the golden circle. If you do that, you gain more risk. I will try to show it again on the next one. Uh, scene, the rituals sometimes are deadly, especially if you're not careful and if you are occupied with other things like recording. But otherwise, I was able to gain quite a good a chunk of XP here in just a few maps I run today. On this batch before I got almost all the way to level 96. Here we got another ritual. This time I'm going to be playful. So I stand in this orb. You see the golden. If I step out of it, it's blue. If I back in, it's moving and it's gold. Or I can teleport and it's gold. But it is golden when it's active. And it's blue when it's not active. At least for the cir outer circle on it. Also really great with the quick maps, we have a good amount of leak mechanic we get, which means we can supply our town with ore. Now I'm going to be about to be done with the map. Map running itself takes me three and a half minutes, however my build is fairly good at map rushing and at clearing the rituals. I expect other builds to be about four minutes to five minutes if they contain a mage blood or a headhunter, or five minutes to six minutes for more simpler approaches. Which still is fine. What I like about Ritual is that in the end it's not something that you want to perma rush because once you get to the Ritual window you do want to be a little bit of conscious of what, of what you're doing and I will show it in a moment. In this map I did got a lot of favor, a lot of tribute so I will be able to get most of things but sometimes you don't get the Ritual on the map boss which means that now the map boss uh, which means you get a significant less tribute. You're going to be sitting at like 4k to 7k instead of sitting at about 14, 15k. So again, I'm looking for the blue orb. I find it. I stand inside of the orb. Now it's active. I'm just trying to stay inside to get additional favor, uh, additional tribute. Mixing those two up. And that's it. Now the map itself took me in this case four minutes, including the dying time, including talking. But it's still in a decent time. Now, I don't want to immediately leave the map and I don't want to always do the same action on my ritual. So I'm going to open the ritual window. I'm going to look for items I already have deferred or items I want to defer. So I'm just checking just to be sure that nothing is hidden on my filter that shouldn't be hidden. And I defer them again. Now, I defer them and I look for my tribute. After rolling your tribute, you want there to be more than I think it was... 3.4k tribute left because this is what you likely got to be need in case you get a T0 unique or mirror or mirror shards or a big diff card. After that, I defer it again. So here is Ristasa Coil Offspring. If it's worth more than 2 chaos, I do like to take him. For items, I usually like him to be worth 5 plus or 10 plus chaos. So these three is okay. But only if I have a lot of tribute. If I'm not having a lot of tribute, I don't like to defer those. Exalted shards are not really worth it, in my opinion. Now, I just got here the message, item is too cheap to defer again. 
This means that now is the time to grab the items and defer the rest. And there I'm doing it again. Checking if there's anything else here that's important. This one actually doesn't sound too bad, so I'm going to grab that. And then my last defer, I have 3.3k left. There's nothing big I want to redefer. So on this last one, I need to check if there's anything that I might not want to defer because of the rest tribute I have, and I can do further to first. So only deferring these two bigger items. And now I can grab the smaller items. And now because I do have some spare left, I'm just grabbing stuff randomly out of it that is highlighted on my filter. And that is how we want to run the map. With how to run the maps out of the way, let's take a look at consistent and inconsistent profit. I think this is a very interesting thing for a ritual, and I get to more of it in a moment. For me, it took me between three and four minutes to run the map, and then it took roughly another minute, minute and a half to defer all the items. It does take some time, and sometimes you need to consider, do I want to defer another time, or do I want to stop here? And then you need to buy some items, and it, it does take some time. So this time is considered as a time run per map. Another thing that it's worth noting, as I've been called out for it, I should be looking more at profit per map or return on maps. I am including that always on my spreadsheet. On consistent, inconsistent, and including notable drops on my results, there will always be a section called profit per map. And I, I also deem that important. I'm not always mentioning it. I, As a content creator, I'm also kind of looking at making my videos more more flashy, more visible, but if there is enough demand for me to just state the facts and be very consistent in the way I present them, I can adjust that as well. I wanted to be honest and open about this as my goal is always to be transparent. So for this farm, for ritual farming, the profit per map isn't that high until we get to notable drops, which I, I want to talk separately about. So if you are running 5 minutes maps, you are on a baseline covering your cost just with chaos, maps over the stain, and then with greater Eldritch and, great, and Grand Eldritch currency. So as a baseline, you are covering your cost with ritual farming. So this is already great. We, on a baseline, we're not making minus. Now, when we add divine and audience with kings, we are making a slight profit, but this is still not any any good indicator for ritual, right? There's something more, and I, like I said, I get to that in a moment. So the audience with the king, which at some point you're gonna find a ritual where it looks more like the ritual that you've seen in Affliction League, and then the king on the mist starts laughing, and that is you know that now you hit big, because when you hear that, every viewer window will almost guaranteed have one audience with the king, sometimes even two. So I had this ritual twice in my 100 map test and I got 8 audience with a king out of that. So those stack up real quick and it's really great to have because those do go for quite a bit. And then we're gonna get some divine up sooner or later, maybe we get a random drop or we're gonna find it in the windows. Now it did notice that if you use ritual vessels, the blood filled ones, you're gonna find more divine orbs. but you're also going to be spending more on your map. So if you add that, your consistent profit will dip while your inconsistent profit will increase, at least based on my experience with the limited amount of blood filled vessels I had lying around and threw on some of my maps. So with this, we have consistent and inconsistent profit. But where is the big profit in this farm? Where do you actually make your currency? And this is where we get to notable drops, which I think is both the benefit the, the good part and the bad part about ritual. And it really depends when you do ritual on how good this is. And to explain this further, I first want to show my wealthy exile profile. This is for my strategy tabs. And as you can see here, overall, I have roughly 78, 80 divines in value in my tabs. Now the threat maps tab is empty. The fragments tab contains about 12 diffs and scarabs which stacked up over time from exact altars and random drops. Very few of these scarabs are from the ritual window, most of them are just dropped in the map, which is a nice addition to have, and it's good to know that we do get some value from those as well. And then in the currency tab we have mo a good chunk of our value in raw divines, grand eldritch ember, raw chaos and, grand eldritch em and greater eldritch ember. 
And then we have a little bit in Tainted Currency. I already sorted out all the small stuff. This is just things that I would be willing to sell right now to get a final value. And then we get to the dump tab. Here we have the Audience with Kings, special maps, forbidden tomes, items that are 10 tier above like bases. We got two random power runes dropped from an enemy uh, from the, the shield guy, the, the Starfall cave guy. We gotten omens, we gotten conqueror maps, we gotten blueprints. So there is a good chunk of things that you're gonna get over time in these ritual maps because you run the maps fairly quickly. You're also gonna see a good amount of random drops from your maps. So if we combine these fragment the scarabs with the drops uh, from the with the lucky drops, we're suddenly looking at about 40 to 50 divines and notable drops. And this will bump up from 1.37 diff an hour to about 7 diff an hour. We can extend this even further. I'm going to swap over to in-game for this. Ritual farming relies a lot, if, if you're looking at consistent, at small items. So let's take these corpses. Here's a perfect dark marionette which might sell for about 30 chaos or a normal marionette which might sell for 10 chaos. Then we have the, the blizzard crowns that go for 10c. We might get a four socket resonator. We fight get an, might get an exceptional gems. We find high value uniques or at least high rarity uniques. We find synthesized items. We find fractured items. We find omens, we could get an omen of connecting, we could get an omen of fortune, we get corrupted jewels, don't underestimate this, I got a random corrupted jewel with block, block by reading a shield, life and dot multi and it sold for 5 diff, and maybe I could have even gotten more. We get the hateful Accusa for penance bark, which if rolled properly could be worth something, we get the audiences, we get blood filled vessels. There's a lot of things that add up, but those are things that we can't easily sell over the currency exchange. So here you need to make a decision. Are you okay with selling like small things? Where do you do the cut off? And that will heavily define how profitable the ritual farming is. Another thing that will heavily define how profitable ritual farming is, is for how long you will do it. There is basically a bound to happen thing for ritual. If you run Ritual long enough, you will find a big ticket item. Be it, for example, a body of mine that earlier this league got the power charge ring base, which we are using now on the Ice Nova build, or be it a Frenzy ring, be it a shield with implicit, be it a head under, be it a mage blood, be it diff cards for a head under or mage blood, be it mirror shards, be it mirror. Eventually, you're gonna find something big, and suddenly your diff per hour is gonna jump up from like 10, uh, 8 to 10 divines. Do 20 divine 30 divines because you got that big hit in for that time frame but it really depends when it will hit and how long you run it until you're happy and you're getting that big hit they so wanted to be very clear about this thing about ritual farming it is a good baseline strategy and then it has a very explosive big hit part now i spoke about when and this brings me to the final part about this big hit thing the earlier you farm Ritual in a league, the more items are big hit. For example, if we take a look at, let me grab a Wisdom Scroll. At Void Batteries, oh, at Void Batteries, they dropped. If we take a look at the Artist Manufaction, oops, it dropped in value. If we look at the the fracturing thing, this is barely worth anything, but earlier it could have been worth more. So Ritual has an absurd big hit factor early into a league where there's a lot of demands for a lot of things, as it provides well world rares, decent fractures, the omens. So there's a lot of things that people want early that are dropping in value as their supply increases later on. So I just wanted to add this for people that are looking for a farming strategy for early next league. Ritual is indeed an S tier early league strategy because of all the explosive things that you can get, the big items that you can get with ritual farming. But yeah, that's enough about this. Video doesn't have to be longer than it has to be. Have a wonderful day. Any questions as usual, comment section, Discord, 
or live when I live streaming on Twitch. I have a lot of still planned for this league. I'm gonna be live streaming a lot more this league. So feel free to drop by, say hello, have a wonderful day, and I'll be seeing you on Twitch or next video. Goodbye.